Hey guys, welcome back to All in the Law. Um, this is OBGYN, and today I'm going to talk about what are the risk factors for amniotic fluid embolism. Risk factors for amniotic fluid embolism okay guys so amniotic fluid embol embolism the amniotic fluid embolism is, is nothing but it's a sudden onset of what you call respiratory distress and coagulopathy okay uh, this what happens this amniotic fluid enters the circulation and sets up what you call a DIC that is a disseminated intravascular coagulation leading to the consumption coagulopathy okay consumptive coagulopathy what we call okay classically what will be the history is is a woman in a what you call late labor or immediate postpartum grasp for air okay has a bronchospasm and becomes cyanotic undergoes immediate collapse and what you call a cardiorespiratory arrest and usually accompanied by hemorrhage and sudden death can take place that's why the amniotic fluid embolism is very dangerous okay guys so you have to monitor the patient very carefully so what are the risk factors first remember the multiparity if the ma mother is a multiparous then it has chances of developing what you call amniotic fluid embolism then titanic titanic uterine contraction What's the titanic uterine contraction? The titanic interaction contraction is a single uterine contraction lasting more than three minutes is known as what you call a titanic uh, uterine contraction, okay? And uh, age of the patient is more advanced maternal age and use of what you call uterine stimulants. Uterine stimulants, okay guys? Caesarean section C-sec, okay, cesarean section, uterine rupture, okay, uh, premature separation of placenta, separation of placenta, and IUD intrauterine fetal death okay if these are present then there are risk factors for what you call risk for developing fluid amniotic fluid embolism guys okay guys so this is a brief discussion about the risk factors thank you so much for watching this video take care